Welcome everyone. Welcome to this evening's class. This evening we're going to be talking about muscle physiology. It is a, uh, a great topic. It's something that's really important to understand. Uh, not just understanding the names of muscles, the locations of muscle, their origins, insertions. But it's really, really important to understand how muscles contract, what's involved. So we'll be talking a little bit about, uh, you'll hear words like calcium, you'll hear words like neurotransmitters, you'll hear neuromuscular junction, you'll hear actin, myosin, T-tubule, sarcomere, sarcoplasmic reticulum. Uh, you'll hear a bunch of these terms, and I will show you uh, with some pictures um, how everything is pieced together. I try and make neurophysiology, not neurophysiology, myophysiology, as simple and as direct as possible. So thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoy um, the session. All right, here we go. So we are going to be looking at uh, the, let's get right to the beginning here. How about we start there? That's a good place to start. How about that? Types of muscular tissue. So to review, we've already covered a little bit of this when we covered the lecture on tissues. There's skeletal, about tissues, remember the four types, there was epithelial tissue, connective tissue, it was muscle tissue, and neurons. So when we look at the muscular tissue to review, there were skeletal, cardiac, and muscle. And what you should remember from that lecture is that both skeletal and cardiac are both considered striated. Only skeletal is voluntary. Both cardiac and visceral, or aka smooth muscle, are both involuntary. Skeletal muscle is the type of muscle that attaches to your skeleton, and you um, should understand a little bit by this point in time about the axial skeleton versus the appendicular skeleton. Uh, we're going to cover the same concept when we do muscles. When we do the lab, you'll understand that there is a axial muscular, skeleton, muscular system and there is an appendicular muscular system or the extremities. So skeletal muscle is the muscle that attaches to your skeleton. It helps to move the bones. It is voluntary. They are multinucleated and striated. The cardiac muscle is one nucleus, but it is striated. And remember these um, cardiomyocytes have these intercalated discs, which is where the two different myocytes or cardiomyocytes come together and join through gap junctions. So that vertical black lines that we see here is called an intercalated disc. Visceral muscle, this is around our organs, this is around blood vessels, arteries, it's around your trachea, your colon. Um, it's in the GI tract, it's involved with peristalsis, right, which is the peristaltic contractions that moves food from the esophagus into the stomach, into the small intestine and large intestine. Um, it is the smooth muscle contraction that pushes the food along, okay? And again, cardiac and visceral is involuntary. The functions of the muscular system, it produces body movements. Of course, we're referring to skeletal muscle. It helps to stabilize the different body positions. It is involved in storing and mobilizing substances within the body. One of the neat things about muscle is that it they pump. And when muscles pump, it helps to pump all the fluids in the body, which is why in terms of healthcare, we really don't want to see people sedentary. We don't want to see uh, people in senior homes um, lying sedentary and motionless. I mean, think of what happens if you find any body of water in nature that's stagnant. 
you see growth, you see algae growth on top, you see bacteria, yuck, right? We want to keep things moving and circulating. And muscles pumping does just that. It pumps blood, it pumps oxygen, it pumps nutrients. It even pumps cerebral spinal fluid. So keeping muscles contracting is really important to mobilize substances within the body. And we know that when muscles contract, they generate heat. How neat is that? We know that when you exercise, you burn calories, calor, calor means heat. Uh, when you exercise, you sweat and to cool off the body, your body perspires. We know when you have a little bit of a fever and your muscles contract, they contract to generate heat. Very neat. So these are just some of the uh, functions of muscle tissue. Now, in terms of some of their properties, uh, when we talk about the NMJ, the neuromuscular junction, at that particular place, at the NMJ, the neuromuscular junction, this is where the nerve and muscle come into contact, or the axon comes into contact with the muscle end plate. So muscles are electrically excitable. If you've ever been to a doctor of chiropractic, if you've ever been to a physical therapist uh, or a physiatrist, you'll notice that if they happen to do um, electric stim, they put these electrodes on your muscles and what happens? They start jumping around. So they are electrically excitable. Uh, the term contractility, when muscles contract, uh, they have the ability to generate tension. And when muscles generate tension, muscles can shorten, muscles can lengthen, and muscles can remain the same length. In terms of extensibility, every muscle, based on its properties and based on the proteins that it is made of, has the ability to extend to a certain degree. Now, if it extends too far, that's when muscles or tendons tear and rip. Right, Every tissue has its anatomical limit. If it exceeds that anatomical limit, we have a lesion. Now, the term lesion is a term, it's a very generalized term. It just means any abnormality to the tissue. So in this case, there's a lesion because there's an abnormality to the tissue where it tore or ripped. Elasticity is the fact that you have uh, muscles and tendons that have the ability to stretch a bit, but then to recoil back. That's the beauty of the musculoskeletal system. Things have the ability of stretching, but can recoil back. Okay, so I'm going to pause here and I'm gonna come back. We will get into the different types of contraction. So hang on there. And remember, the term contraction means to generate tension. That's all it means.